Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel for another vital sound design tutorial. In this video I'm gonna try to go for a slightly more optimized way of making a sound similar to that of a famous Boris Brecka track. The inspiration for making this video came from uh, another video from a YouTuber by Yalcinefe, who is quite famous, has tens of thousands of uh, subscribers, he doesn't need my endorsement, but you might actually need to check his channel out because he's one of the very few who's doing things, well, quite right in my book. My book. Anyway, he had made a couple of weeks ago a video about six different bass sounds that every producer should know, and one of those was this one. And I, uh, I agree his way of doing it is interesting and very effective, but I think it can slightly be optimized in the way I'm going to show here. So, without any further ado, let's get going. So, uh, Yalcinefe was using Serum, I, as, as you could guess, I'm gonna use Vital, which, as you know, is not that different. The, I'm um, create the same MIDI pattern, which is here, and uh, it's very simple MIDI pattern, is just this thing here. And it's, the whole finished product should sound something like this, well, finished, well, there's just a kick and a bass. Anyway, it, we're talking about this bass sound, and I made it this way. How? The way to get there, well, uh, I'm in the original track, apparently, as Boris Brecht himself had shown in a video, he was using uh, FabFilter 1. And uh, then getting the stereo information in the bass from uh, effects. Intelligently, in my opinion, um, Yalcinefe decided to do that with oscillators, and I think that process can be made even more, even better, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So I have one oscillator here, I can get a second oscillator, get them to like one octave apart. So I'm gonna let this one, which is up here, which is the one who is one octave up, I'm gonna let it to be a sawtooth, and I'm gonna give it some unison, let's go six voices of unison, and a bit less detuning because 20% is really a lot. And this one, I'm not gonna leave it to be a simple uh, sawtooth, but I'm gonna make it a square wave. Now, now that I've made this, uh, as you might know, or if you don't, well, uh, you you might you might want to check on my earlier videos, which I called uh, some basic yet unusual oscillator tricks. What we get here is basically something which has the exact same spectrum of a saw wave as these two don't have any common harmonic. What it, mean, what it means is we have like a sawtooth wave with this as a fundamental, which has a stereo opening in this case, because there's unison, unison on the second oscillator on all its even harmonics and sound a bit like this, very far from being a bass, but it definitely has, it definitely has plenty of stereo information. Now, uh, we gotta do something about all those highs, which is, of course, putting here a filter, we'll go for 24 dB and make it less, le bit less resonance, that was a lot. And here, we're starting to have something that sounds kind of like a bass. Now, we might want to give this envelope a little bit of click, a little bit, so that it still has sustain, but it goes, and then we're going to make the second one snappy and use it to modulate the filter a little less, even less resonant. And, well, most of the work is done. Now, uh, what is happening here is that this is playing an F1, which is uh, which means it would be around uh, around 98, 99 hertz, uh, and this is one octave below, so it's gonna be somewhere half of that, so around uh, 49, 50, something like that hertz, is, which is which is fine. It's definitely sub bass territory, <clears throat> but <clears throat> it will start having stereo information from around 100 Hz upwards. Maybe this is a little bit too much, 
I mean, maybe we don't want to have stereo information that low. So what can we do? We can go here and remove the fundamental from this one and add a second harmonic to this one. And this should get, you know, you, we get the point where stereo information comes, starts to appear in our sound one octave above. So it will start from like 200 hertz, which is very low, but now we can, well, that was exaggerating, but we actually can increase the amount of unison here, or not the max of unison, the tune, sorry, without having our sound breaking, breaking up too much. Because, as you can guess, as we want it to be, it's going to be strictly mono in its low end. And this will happen without us having to add, at the end of the signal chain, some uh, utility mono or bass mono or things like that, because, because it's mono from the very beginning. I mean, there is nothing wrong with correcting things uh, downhill, but if you can get things right from the beginning, well, I think it's better. And that was the, that's somehow the whole point. Now, uh, this, we could, I wouldn't say it's finished because it isn't, we could get uh, a lot more things done with this. Now we could go with some effects, there's probably some distortion would do great, we could use other distortion plugins, so we could use, you know, another you know, we could definitely use a saturator or whatever distortion plugin you like. We could add some reverb on the top end, but maybe, maybe it's not the case. And uh, we might want to use, add some compression, not this crazy multiband compression, but a single band compression. And we will tune it so that, see here, now the, there's, we want it to just catch the tip of the of the envelope here in the beginning and you know it gives it a little bit more punch and oomph. Now uh Yeltsin I failed to add it add uh, a little more beef somehow in the low end, in the mid low end. He added a thing with he added an equalizer which did an add, added a bump, a dynamic bump controlled by an envelope. And we can do that as well. We could do it from the effects from the EQ exactly as it did and um, I think there's nothing wrong with it. But in that case we would have something which is static. You know you would we would have that uh, that EQ, um, that EQ emphasis being static in, in our, in our, in our spectrum. And therefore, well, okay, now we're playing in F and maybe we won't play anywhere else, but if we have something we want to move around, it won't work. And uh, getting EQ bands to be key tracked can be kind of tricky. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use a second filter, send to it filter one and not oscillator two, and turn it into a BPN. What does it mean? It means here it's a band pass, here it's a band reject, but here it is a peaking filter. I'm going to get its resonance to the minimum and then have this resonance be controlled by this envelope too. And I'm going to make it a lot less. Then I'm going to get it key tracked and I'm going to say, where do I want this bump to happen? Here is uh, the in zero. So exactly would be on the fundamental of this oscillator, which isn't there. So I could go one octave above that somewhere around one octave above that or yep. And here is going to be my bump. And so now I have this thing being slightly controlled by our and this gives us this effect, which we can add more character or make a difference. You so see, there's lots of things with it we can do. I had the distortion at the end, but I could work on the drive of this filter or on the drive of this filter which gives a completely different response. We could go for different filter models and add and have slightly different effects. Yeah, it's further from being a simple, you know, emulation of someone else's bass, but it's the idea of getting uh, Oryx Breca's bass as an idea to go and create a more articulated patch. Now, um, there was also the idea of adding uh, 
an EQ to remove pops and clicks because at the end also that of side chaining. Let me cover those two things. Let's go for side chaining first. Instead of using a side chain compressor, which of, of course works, of course it does the job, but you know what a side chain, side chain compressor is, is nothing but an automated volume control. You know, it's something that whenever a kick hits, uh, lowers the volume of your sound. So why do I need a kick to do that? I can have a synced LFO like this one, and I can use it to control the volume. So I'm, get, I'm gonna get this to control my volume negatively, not so much, just a bit. I'm gonna have to decide how much. And well, I could use a remap, but since this LFO is gonna, you're gonna be used just for this, I'm gonna be fine with having, um, with the, modifying the shape of the LFO. And now, now you see this, this smooth parameters will start to be important because because it might start getting clicky if I get down here. It isn't doing it, but I, you know, it might. And so now we have that there is, it's in one half, I'm gonna need to be in quarters. See, it's kind of clicky. I can make it stop being clicky by raising the smooth uh, parameter somehow. And now with a kick, It gets, it gets, you know, gets the kick through a lot better. Now, uh, this could be all, but no, it isn't all because I wanted to mention the, the click thing. You see, there's a problem here with the fact that we have a bass and we have this uh, phase of every oscillator being completely random. Now, we're fine with this oscillator having its phase random, mostly because it's quite high in the spectrum, so the clicks aren't that that audible that important and it also has a six voices unison so we would have some annoying artifacts if we got the phase randomization to zero but we can definitely get the phase randomization of this one to zero and another thing we can do is make sure you see we do care about the harmonic content of it but we really have no issue about the relative phases so i'm gonna add a modifier here which is um, a phase shift and I'm gonna make the mode of this phase shift different. So see here is, uh, no, it's not that, no, 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 I don't, I didn't wanna do any of this. So you see this phase shift, I can change the way it works and make it different. See style, I'm gonna go for harmonic. Harmonic will mean, you know, that every, no, you see every single harmonic will be the phase of every harmonic will be controlled by this control. And then I can, of course, go back into my wave source and get its... No, that is not what I want to do. I want to get here and then get to get, get this thing U wide out and I'm going to get the phase of everything to zero. So now that the phase of everything is at zero, here I have a big peak, here I have nothing, I'm gonna turn my phase shift somewhere so that there is like, see it, because I don't want to move it around, so that you see this point in the center is like at zero. I want it to be at zero, it isn't. Now now it's my kind of slightly closer closer to it. I can keep going somewhere. I want this in the middle to be a zero so that that base won't click in any case. It doesn't look like a square wave at all anymore, but it still sounds like one. And if you hear, and you see there is no EQ and no controlling of high frequency, but there is no trace. There is no trace of clicking. There is just this, this, uh, this side chain, which kind of, which hits a little bit hard. And as I mentioned, you, we might want to smooth out a bit. And yep, this was the other thing. Also, another thing I thought of and I hadn't mentioned yet. The um, see, I did this thing with uh, this filter, which is probably the best sounding way of doing it, but it's not the only way. See, if you wanted to get uh, peculiar, you know, be a little bit of, I would say maniacal about saying, hey, no, I wanna reduce the amount of uh, 
processing power I use, I want everything to be as minimal as possible. I'm going to create another keyframe here. I'm going to zoom back in and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to get on this keyframe some emphasis on, say, you see, this is the eighth, I mean, the, the, um, the octave which means uh, the first note that uh, there isn't, it, the, the, this note is not there in the other oscillator. I'm going to emphasize this other one and this other one and this other one just a bit. Maybe this a little more. I don't know. I'm just, just going by trial and error. And let's get this back to here. And on this one, I'm going to do something very similar, like, but not, instead of on three frequencies, I'm going to do it on five. And no, 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 I, I'm doing it wrong. Sorry, I'm just, I shouldn't touch this on this keyframe. I need to create another keyframe to do so. And here it is. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, maybe even slightly more. So now here this has a different harmonic content and now I can get this envelope to control the keyframe and what happens is we get this this bit more See, it sounds different. Uh, it definitely sounds different. It's not being emphasized by a filter, but it's still an idea to give more character to a sound in that frequency area without having to resort to, you know, asking your your computer to process more components to create more stuff. It gets a different sound. It's not again. I'm not just talking about emulating or recreating sounds. You're just looking at ideas to get somewhere around there. And yep, this is it. I mentioned uh, the, um, the side chaining, I mentioned, mentioned the EQing, I mentioned the saturation, I mentioned kind of everything. And so I can say, well, it's kind of done. So I thank you for your attention and for staying with me this long. For all of you who have been uh, subscribe to my channel for quite some time. Thank you for the patience since it has been like two months since my last video and for and thank you to all of the people who have subscribed in that meantime since I've gone past 700 subscribers and I'm very happy of it. And um, this is it. In the description here, well, you will find a link to that Yeltsin FS video, a link to my music, which uh, yeah, you know I do, I do, I do some music with my amazing sound design skills from time to time. There's a link to my Gumroad where you can find my patches for Vital, and there's gonna be patches for other synths sometime. There's also a link to the YouTube of the guy who makes my thumbnails, who is really, really good, is more focused on the mixing and uh, mastering side of things, but he definitely knows his, his, uh, his stuff around uh, DAW. And uh, also, well, uh, also there's going to be a link to Deep Tons Production you saw the jingle earlier about, and we'll, we'll, which I'm cooperating with, and we offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring and a bunch of other audio-related services. So all this said, uh, if you haven't subscribed already and you're still here and you heard me talking all about synths and then even doing my all self-promotion about my links, you do have to subscribe because you definitely have a thing for hearing me talk. And yeah, this said, I can say again, thank you for your attention and goodbye. See you at my next video, which will probably be soon.